What's up, people? Welcome to this episode of the By the Hood podcast or webcast because I don't know how you're consuming this content. Listen, today's um, podcast episode is a very special episode. It's a recording that I did with my brother uh, Kamari Ellis, the finance rebel. We had a conversation about is it possible to be conscious as well as a capitalist in today's society. So um, please enjoy this episode. Make sure you subscribe to his channel as well um, or listen to his podcast. It's the finance rebel. I'll put the links for all of his information in the description. But please enjoy this episode and give us some feedback. Let us know. Do you think it's possible to be both conscious and a capitalist or do you have to choose? Question of the day. Would you rather be broke or be woke? So that's today's question, right? That's a question that plagues the black community all the time. There's always this battle. Should you make money or should you be conscious and work for the movement? to help black people elevate. Today, I wanted to bring somebody on because we've been having this conversation. We said, we should talk about this for the whole audience because we all kind of struggle with this a little bit, right? It's okay to make money, but when is it, when, when is it too much, right? When is it, when does it go wrong or is there wrong? So today I wanted to bring on Jimmy from by the hood, you know, my fellow black ball project brother. And we wanted to have a good conversation and get into it. What's up, brother? What's up, beloved? How are you? Oh, well, man, it's good. We ain't, we ain't rocked out in a minute. I know, man. I know. I mean, well, you know, we, we get in our normal, uh, we're supposed to be two-minute conversations that end in a couple-hour conversations, but <laughs> not, on, not on the platform, though, not on your platform, man. How are you? Or on yours, right? Yeah. And, Dag, there was something else I wanted to try out today. Um, there's a way to link the platforms now, and I don't even know how to do it. We do but, it whenever, man. We can try that whenever, man. Yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get to it, but... Today, we're going to talk about it, right? Mm-hmm. Make money talk or be woke? Let's talk about it, all right? So um, this is an interesting conversation, right? And I know that this is a battle that happens in our community all the time. All the time. Like, hold on, hold on. Go ahead, go ahead. I got I to gotta, I gotta do you right, man. So again, this is JW, Jimmy Williams from By the Hood, right? <laughs> got to give him the horns. Got to give him his respect. Oh, I got air horns. You know, that's all I wanted was air oh, horns. Oh, yeah. Got to give him, gotta give him the horns. I'm, I'm, I'm official now. Of course, you've been official. You was official before I met you. You was who you was before you got here, player. Yeah. Right. So, so today, you know, we we wanted to have this conversation. Me and Jimmy was actually having this conversation behind scenes, and like you said, he wanted to feel, felt like we should have it. Yeah. With everybody, because this is a conversation that we all struggle with. A lot of people struggle with. So go ahead, Jimmy. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, I was just saying that it is something that we struggle with. But even deeper than should you be one or the other is how do you find that happy medium to kind of like, you know, do a little bit of both or be a little bit of both. But I mean, a lot of people don't think you can have an happy medium now. That's the conversation right there. Can you have a happy medium? Right. Um, I know the term woke has been, um, you know, that's the new that's the new N word, the way folks are using it out in the street. <laughs> but but the idea is, can you be a, a capitalist but still um, operate, you know, with, in the conscious space? Like, is it possible? Um, and that's kind of the conversation. Now people get mad at me when I tell them I'm a black capitalist, right? Oh yeah. But they think I'm crazy, but they're like, well, Kamara, you do stuff for the community and you give stuff out and you do yada, yada, yada. Most people don't even know what capitalism is. And I think that's a big problem with our community. We don't understand economics. We don't understand business at a deep level Mm -hmm. because all of these isms are just philosophies. That's all they are. They're not hard, set in stone. Yeah. And in my opinion, you can do whatever you want to do. Yeah, yeah. And also, it's that it's that it's that debate over what makes more sense or what helps more people and what we're actually living in, right? Because unless we're ready to take up arms and just change the whole system, and we're not prepared for that either, you have no choice but to operate under this current structure. Now, the thing is, is this current structure capitalism that we live in? That's a whole no. other debate. No. All right, so I would agree with you. It's not right. So that's a whole other debate. But the fact of the matter is, this is still the system that we have. So how do we operate in this current system, you know, and do what's right for our folks? Um, that's the question I get into the base with all the time. People tell me, oh, I'm a socialist. I'm a this. I'm like, okay, cool. But that's not what we have. So, like, what you going to do with what we have? How are you going to produce and do for your folks right now with what we have? You know what I mean? So that's the other part of the conversation. I don't think folks really know, like really, really know what these things are. They don't know what capitalism is. They don't know what socialism is. They don't know what communism is. Because when I hear people talk about it, 
because I went to school for finance. Mm-hmm. And in finance, you have to take a lot of economics classes. Y'all don't understand the definitions. And again, you know, not trying to be overly technical about some of this stuff, but how can you really have a real conversation about a thing if you really don't understand what it is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, it's difficult, right? Because what you're talking about and what capitalism is are two different things. Right. Because most people, like you, we just said, think that we live in a country that practices capitalism and we have a bastardized version, right? You know, where the oligarchs get to do kind of what they want. So it's, it's not true capitalism. But at the end of the day, all these things are just isms. And at the, so as, as my brother Corey likes to say, man, people go on people. And the thing about all these different... Hold systems, on, we got to give it up for Corey because... That's real. People are going to people. People are going to people. So people are are being a part. Uh, people are operating any of these systems. So you're going to run into issues no matter what system you choose to abide by because it's just people. Because the wildest thing to me, right, with all of this, and I'll probably do another show on this, but all this pro Russia talk is like they're kind of like the epitome of socialism slash communism. Mm-hmm. But why there's so many poor people there, and why there are oligarchs there, if it really was truly about the people and it's like hmm, maybe y'all need to look at this a little bit deeper but well because the same way that we think we have capitalism they think they had that so none of these things are actually like you just said there's ideas there yeah. are ideas who, who, are. Actually, who has actually implemented any of these ideas right to the fullest of the extent to the fullest of the extent yeah yep so that, that's that's the other question right but but the the the, the um overall topic in terms of like you know business owner and, and, and woke is interesting because when you operate a business, right, and it depends upon who you who you listen to. Some people believe that operating a business is for the the only purpose is to generate value for shareholders, whether that's a small business and you're the only shareholder, whether you have a large corporation and there's many shareholders, right? Milton Freeman was the economist who said that um the only purpose of a corporation is to provide value to shareholders. So if that's true, not saying I agree with that. Um, how do you operate in that space in terms of maximizing profit by still being for the people? And that's the conversation that me and you were having offline. Right. You said that it's possible. Yeah, I think it's possible. Um, so here's the thing. I, I, I would have to go dig this up, right? But Ben & Jerry's multi-billion dollar business was, was mm-hmm. brought by a major conglomerate, but their whole thing was for socialism. Well, not socialism, but they had a social mandate. They wanted to take care of folks. You can do that within a a capitalist construct, Mm -hmm. right? Not so much within a socialist slash communist construct. And so if I think people really got down to it and understood what certain things are, it would be, I think we could get more traction. But I Mm -hmm. also think we live in the past a lot. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Baba Fred, Baba Chairman Fred, years and years ago was was pro capital i mean excuse me pro pro socialism Mm -hmm. so he was so prolific in what he did and what he talked about in his movement with the panthers that that's just kind of etched in everybody's brain but then you go to malcolm right he was talking about capitalism if you really think about it right the the whole do business do for self that's a capitalist construct now if you don't understand capitalism it might sound foreign to you. Yeah, and then so if like, you go back to the originator of all this, the OG, right? Marcus Messiah, Garvey, was talking about capitalism. He was, he was talking he was. about doing it to take care of your folks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he also said race first, and people tend to forget that part. But um, so you made a lot of excellent points there. The thing is, <laughs> again, this gets back to those isms, right? And all isms. Spark but, we, but it's also difficult to compare anything that we're trying to do with Ben and Jerry's for a lot of for a lot of reasons, right? Whether that's um politically or just culturally. But I get the idea that you can operate at that scale and still have um I guess a heart, so to speak. But the thing is, is it just about creating value or revenue and then just giving back? What about the things that you do during the way, right? Um, you see a lot of I hate using this analogy, <laughs> but I hear a lot of this and say uh, hip hop, right? Where rappers talk about they sold X amount, you know what I mean? But now they're giving back. I, I can't, I can't help the poor from one of those, right? To to to, to quote the brother. Yeah. So 
but the thing is, if you're causing harm along the way, how do you how do you kind of like you know reconcile that, right? Is it just about creating value to have value and and, and to just, just to give back to the community? What about what you do during that journey? That's the question I have for you. Well, I mean, I think it, it's a it's a rough thing, right? Um, mm-hmm. Many people who are brought up under Western Americanized type things feel like they only have one way to get out. Yeah, and that was that was orchestrated intentionally, right? Like I, you and I talk about it, like this whole concept of the streets or yeah. keeping it real or being a real nigga is has been all constructed by white folks. And yeah. so a lot of times we are brought into this Americanized narrative of what wealth and being rich is, and we haven't really questioned it. And there's not enough people of, of, of us questioning it. So then you get these aberrant <laughs> abominations who, who've done that. But, you know, if you're talking about that period, right, we both watched Snowfall. Mm-hmm. A lot of people fell for the crack trip. If yeah. we go back into the 60s and 70s, a lot of people fell for the air round trip, mm-hmm. right? They thought it was a get rich quick, get rich quick scheme. That lottery ticket we always talk about is lottery ticket mentality. And so people are like, all right, I'm going to get this because I'm just surviving here. Mm-hmm. I'm in the jungle right now. And the project has got like 20,000 people in it. It's, it's hand to mouth. A lot of people are desperate. The, the utilities might be off. I got to put away. I got to figure out a way to put money on the table. And we have some way, somehow kind of normalized what I would call criminal activity. But I also get that because, again, that was the only option. So I think I, I, I'm, I'm very careful with how, you know, um, I talk about folks and judge folks who feel like they have no other um, alternative. But the point I was making is in this space that like both of us are in. Right. You have people that are like just on one side to use the term you would use ultra woke where all they do is walk around in garb and is mama and baba is, but they don't do anything, right? And that's no shots at anybody, no disrespect to anybody, but I've seen it. Yeah. Then you have folks on the other side who are just completely capitalist, who have no feelings at all about mm-hmm. community, mm-hmm. Um, about, about anything other than making a dollar, right? But when you try to operate in that middle space, it's, 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 um, you're getting th- you know, um, stuff thrown at you from both sides. I'm and- not black, I'm OJ. <laughs> By the way, OJ uh, commented on that line. I don't know if you saw the clip. Of course I did. Oh, you saw it? Okay, okay. Of course yeah, I did. Yeah, the man got it wrong. But anyway, but no, but <laughs> but <laughs> but the I point mean, is, action, the actions speak, though, right? So it wasn't yeah. just about his words; it was also the actions that went along with it. But I, listen, I'm not. This, this, listen, I thought I'm not judging. Way. I ain't judging. I'm just it's saying. An, you know, it's an amazing line. It's an amazing line. But the, <laughs> the point is, though. Um, how do you now give and for everybody watching and you're watching the replay, you're watching live. Um, let's say I had this conversation. So um, I have rental properties and I was looking at certain properties and I'm feel, I'm looking at what I'm charging for rent versus what's what's going on in the market. And I was telling Kamari, I was like, you know, I can easily just double the rent. And if I double the rent, um, the market will pay me this double the rent. I was like, but out of all the properties I have, there isn't nobody that I rent to that isn't one of our people. So at what point am I cheating myself um, versus trying to look out for someone in the community? And a hard part about it is looking out for that person sometimes is not recognized or not even appreciated, but I can just easily double it. So that, that's kind of where the conversation started. It's like, I got these properties. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm charging a grand per month and the market's paying 2100 2200 and I haven't raised rent in years. I could press a button and raise rent, send out a letter. Like I could do that, but I don't need the money, right? And that's not not trying to sound arrogant or anything like that. Um, so I'm actually looking out for one of our folks. So then the conversation was like, well, it's nothing wrong with looking out for one of our folks. I was like, yeah, that's the, that's a hard thing when I'm looking at what the market is giving and I'm not maximizing my return, but you know, I'm looking out for one of our folks. So how, what do you what do you do in that situation um, where you're not? Ma- you know, I'm in business, right? So in business, you want to you know generate value, maximize value. Yep. Yeah, so that's the thing. In my, I'm not maximizing value though, but I guess value is is different. Value isn't always about dollars and cents, right? I have a, there's a social value uh, that's there too. So you but don't want to be that's, like that's the fight. That's the fight right there. 
Right. You don't want to be like Barry Gordy and Buffy, right? When he was like, everybody did it. Everybody raped everybody. So we should do it too because that's the standard, right? Everybody's raising rents in the city Mm -hmm. because that's the standard. But then when you take a look, when you take a step back and you say, all right, how much am I making? Right. I have these conversations with my clients all the time. Mm -hmm. How much am I making? Am I breaking even? Because again, in the rental game, a lot of my clients are rental real estate investors. Cost goes up every year. Yes. Real estate tax is going up. If you're in Philly, real estate tax is through the roof right now with the new assessments. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you got to be prepared for that. Utilities are going up. Um, the cost of construction or renovations is going up. Man, it's hard just getting um, contractors and handymen out these days, right? My insurance went up like 50%. Like, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So th- th- there's cost all around the board. But you have to factor in a lot of things. In my opinion, you have to factor in, again, what's your overall cost? Mm-hmm. You said you don't need the money. So I'm, I'm guessing that there's probably a profit, but not maximum profit. So, yeah. and, and this is the beautiful thing about capitalism. And that's why I bring up Ben and Jerry's, right? Or I'm sure there's others, right? You don't have to charge the top of the market. Mm-hmm. You do have to charge, though, a going rate so you can remain profitable, mm-hmm. right? Because if you're not profitable, you're going to fail business is going to fail but there's usually enough room now if you're like a supermarket where you have like three percent margins and you got to sell what it is or else you run out of business you don't have that much wiggle room however i'm guessing without you know without knowing the numbers there's probably more than three percent um that's there and i believe you've had some of these properties for years so you probably paid them down you probably have interest rates when we had almost what, no, I do. interest rates. So you, you're kind of padded yourself by making smart moves during good times. Right. Yeah, I mean, so, so I've been in the business over 25 years at this point. Right. So, right. you know, I started in real estate as a teenager, but so I, I I'm, I'm blessed. Right. But at the, what the, the conversation though is how long do I do that? How long do I um not charge market rate? Right. And, it's just a difficult, it's a, it's a difficult thing to kind of like balance because I am trying to look out for certain folks. Right. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm literally costing myself money. I'm literally right. costing myself money. Right. So, so and this, it goes deeper than just this one thing. We talk about this often as it pertains to all different lines of business, yeah. um, trying to provide value without just hitting people over the head for lack of a better term. And then the community, some, some people in the community, let me be, clear some people say well you're not doing enough for the community you're making money you got all that property but mm-hmm. they don't see the party where your insurances went up 50 percent mm-hmm. and your real estate tax might have gone up 50 percent what, what's real estate tax the the average that's going up for in philly well, right now jimmy well the tax rate is 1.398 percent so the value the value uh times the rate is 3.98 percent but it all depends upon which um which property style you have, whether that's multifamily, single family, um, you know. But if you were to put a range, is it 40 to 50 percent, 30 to 40? What do you think? No, nah, it's, it's a little less than that across board. Across the board, you're probably looking at like 20. Around 20. Mm-hmm. And and at the high end, you're seeing what? Because my dad's. Yeah, sure. so at, the high end, at the high end, you're seeing like, you know, you can see up to 50. You can see. 50. OK, OK. So we're seeing rental property increases from anywhere from. 20%. Now, I know there's some other things, homestead. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's nuance to that, too, right? Yeah, yeah I there's a lot of nuance. Yeah, yeah but, but the thing is, that's not even the only thing increasing. Like I said, I know, I know, but I just wanted to give some concrete everybody could follow. But these things happen. This is this is part of the business, right? This mm-hmm. is part of the, the real estate business, but it's with every business, right? Absolutely. When I look at every business I have, um, the cost are, the cost are going up, right? And but I understand who my who my tenant is, and I also understand the clients that we serve. So it's only so much you can do, um, but there is there is some room there, right? So then the thing is this, and, and this is something else that I deal with as a as a as a, a black landlord, right? When I raise rents, I get like all kinds of backlash, even from my tenants. And I'm like, well, when you stayed in such and such property, he raised rent. You don't say anything to them, right? And that's Who's what such I, and such. Come on, come on. I don't wanna, I, listen, listen, man. I want to, you know, feel my political connection. But no, I'm joking. I'll say name Yakubian, right? So here's the thing. So he's talking about the mayonnaise people that look like mayonnaise, right? Okay. Yeah. No, what I'm saying is I, they don't get the same backlash that I get, right? Um, mm-hmm. and I understand why it's history. It's history there too. I get it. But 
I'm thinking like, yo, I haven't raised your rent in a decade and you coming at me for a small raise. But when you, you know what I mean? Like, so I see I, this is this is real life. Um, it's not just like speculation or, or, or things that I've read. I've, I'm experiencing this. So I just have a struggle with how do you still um, serve our folks, right? And maximize profit. Is it possible? Well, before we get into that real quick. If you're just now joining in, make sure y'all join in. Hey, so I'm Don into the chat. Pocket, yo. Uh, I see Don Johnson. Oh, Don uh, out of Don's pocket. always out of pocket. Shout out to Don Johnson. But for everybody that's new here, make sure y'all come in, chime in, t- tell me your name, tell me where you're hailing from so we can get busy and get to you. But so a lot of those things are cultural, right? Like you talked mm-hmm. about, they give you more flack, but they don't give the non-black people flack. You know, that's mm-hmm. a result of bully lynch, right? A lot of people don't believe in the bully lynch letter. While it's not real, mm-hmm. a lot of the doctrine inside of it is true. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. But, you know, I, I I think it's a hard thing. I think it's a hard thing, but I think you're here to do business. And yeah. so I think you not being in the market hurts the community overall, right? That's true. Now, I, I, there's another story I want to share with Jimmy's real quick, because Jimmy's community-minded. I'm community-minded, right? That don't mean we're not capitalists. That don't mean we don't want to make money, but we're not willing to do it at every at any cost. Yes. I know Jimmy brought a property and there was some young boy and they're doing his thing. Yeah. Jimmy didn't call the cops. He went and talked to the young man and said, yo, I own the place. You got to leave. Mm-hmm. For our brothers and sisters who are purely capitalists without the community in mind, they would have just called the cops. Now yeah. we know how things usually add up or wind up when black folks are involved with cops. A lot of times, not all the times, right? But it's a risk that we really don't got to take. Jimmy didn't want to take that risk. I what did. Was- all right. So, but here's the funny thing: some of our folks criticized me for that too. I know. I'm sure. on the block and they were like, "Should have called the cops on his ass. You shouldn't even gave him a chance." I'm like, "Look, I just didn't want to call the cops." I told him, "Look, I'm gonna give you a day. Just you know, what I mean, pack up and roll out. And no harm, no foul." You know what I mean? I'm about to start construction. Cool. And, and to the brother's credit, he didn't bark back, say anything crazy to me. He's like, all right, old head, I appreciate it. And was gone. He literally was gone. But, but some of our folks, and they, you know, some of folks older than uh, older than us, they were like coming at my neck about that. Why ain't you What'd say? Well, you knew he, well, he could have called the cops and got his ass locked up. I don't know why. You, you know, that kind, that kind of talk. And I'm like, man. Um, but you don't know that for certain either, though, right? So why? I, don't, I, don't. I mean, yeah. listen, man. I, you know, I don't know what would have happened. I don't and know what happened. We don't know exactly what he was doing. We didn't see what he was doing. I mean, <laughs> he, had, he had stuff all over the spot. Like I knew. Oh, he he did. oh yeah, and his dog. His dog and his dog was in there too. Like he had his. So he was literally had his dog there protecting in the case somebody else tried to come in. Is like you know. So he. I know. I mean. It was obvious, right? But at the end of the day, my thing is just get out of my way. Like, I'm not going, this is my spot. We about to start construction, roll out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Simple as that. To his credit, he did do that. But I'm saying I got criticized for that as well. So no matter what approach you take, right? No matter what decision you make in this world, um, people gonna have a problem with it. So you got to live with it. It is what it is. But, you, you know, you do try to be community minded in more ways than one. Um, but the fact is, when you try to stand in the middle of, say, capitalism and to use your term, woke, that, that term is so crazy at this point. But to be conscious or whatever you whatever you want to say, you get stuff thrown at you from both sides. But listen, woke has been hijacked. We all know what woke means. But yeah. it's funny, it's funny to me now because the Keeblers have have taken the word and they've used it the way they want. They weaponized it. And a lot of us have fallen for it. So Yeah, we have. Yeah. We have. But I'm just saying, like you get criticized on both sides, right? Yeah. So if you go to extreme to one side, then, you know, you, you kind of get protection from being on that one side. But trying to operate in the middle is always a little like a little dangerous because some. And, and again, I have friends on both sides of the spectrum. I have friends that are total capitalists, friends that are totally like just, you know, like I told you, um, they just walk around in dashikis and, and, and speak Swahili. Right. And, and, they, and, they come my, and they come on my neck talking about all you care about is money. I'm like, nah, that's not true. Um, then my capitalist folks be like, look, forget all that. We just got here to make money and take care of our family. Right. So trying to operate in the middle is a little a, a little funny, man. All right, so I want to I want to play this clip real quick, mm-hmm. and I want to get your thoughts on it. Yes, sir. The question is, how do you define wealth? 
Is wealth your ability to go to the store and buy a garment, some shoes, a car, a flat screen TV? Is that really wealth? Wealth does not start from access to material things. Wealth starts with your possession of knowledge. If we don't possess knowledge that guides us into how to create wealth, then we'll talk about wealth, but we'll never have it because we don't have the requisite knowledge that would allow us to be a creator of wealth. And so I love playing that clip. I love, first of all, shout out to the minister, right? Um, I love that clip because I feel like we talk about wealth in the wrong context. Mm -hmm. And since we talk about wealth in the wrong context, everything else is talked about wrong. From capitalism to all the isms, we talk about it wrong, and we haven't taken the time to educate ourselves. Yeah, you're right. You're right. What do you first think about all, that? First of all, shout out to the brother minister, man. Like he's one of the greatest orators. Like regardless of whether you feel about him or what he says, Fact. his ability to speak is just like you know he's top five. <laughs> like, he's top five. He just is right. But the thing about that is, so I was I was actually um at a funeral yesterday. Um, and, and rest in power to uh, my brother Dwayne. Um, my condolences. Yeah, so I was at a funeral yesterday, and as I'm sitting there listening to um, Reverend Waller did the um, eulogy, and I'm listening to him speak, and you know I was sitting there thinking about all the funerals I've been to in my entire life, and I, I know people from all walks of life. Just my, you know, through my through my walk, I've met people through all you know different walks of life, <clears throat> and I was like, I'm sitting there thinking about it, like I've never heard anyone talk about their net worth at their funeral, right? Mm -hmm. They talk about what they've done for others, how they made others feel like, you know, so when I, that's what I thought of when I just heard, heard that clip is it's about the value you add to society, but not necessarily monetarily, but it's still about value at the end of the day. It's still about value. Um, it's just, again, value comes in all different forms and fashions. There's social value. You know, um, love is value. Right. And we talk about black love all the time. So, Gotta give you the horns for that, brother. Yeah, so I, I, I kind of think that that's what true wealth is. True wealth is what value do you add to your people? You know what I mean? So if, if that is being a capitalist and being able to bring that money back to your people, but again, some people just focus on capitalism for, for monetary things. You know what I mean? Like for the lifestyle stuff. It's a lot of lifestyle stuff going on in our community where it's not really community-minded or really about helping each other. It's really about living a completely different lifestyle. Yeah, everybody's not trying to be Nino Brown, right? Everybody's mm -hmm. not trying to be um, the Mac or, you know, somebody from Superfly. I, I get that. But I guess I, I just wonder why the community, and I'm speaking black community, I'm speaking generally, right? Mm -hmm. Why do we have such a negative connotation when it comes to making money? Like well, you're automatically the devil if you've made some money. Well, look, I mean, we've been stomped on so many times throughout history, right? And most of the time, the people stomping on us are those that have wealth, power, and influence. So there's a negative connotation associated with being in business or having money. When you watch TV most of the time, um, a lot of times these bad guys are wealthy folks, right? They make them out to be the evil person. It's not who's, a, who's really a, a socially conscious uh, capitalist or business person really in pop culture. You really don't have too many. Um, yeah, but I mean, while black people control pop culture, Mm -hmm. Once we created, we're pushed to the to the outskirts of black. I'm saying you combine that with what has happened to us historically, right? I, so I get that. I get that. So but, so so, and again, I think there's I think there's enough if you want to do the work, right? So I'm a hip hop head, right? And I and I always hear this this saying, hip hop, good hip hop isn't played on the radio. Mm -hmm. Well, technically, good hip hop was never really played on the radio. True, because you know you had to find it, you had to get a mixtape. You had to listen to Lady B on Sunday from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You had to listen to Colby Cole with Radioactive. And then as it became mainstream, it was, you know, centrally programmed and they did what they wanted. But we've always had to search and find for those gems. When did we get to the point where we want to get lazy when we want to find value? 
Well, I mean, you can make the argument that's always happened too, right? <laughs> you just named a, a, a couple things in our community and our culture that have been elevated to the point where everyone knows what you're talking about when you say the macro superfly, right? That that that's how how old is that? Seventies, I guess I'm showing my age. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Yo, but listen though, a shot to Goldie and Ron O'Neill. But at the end of the day, like when you look at what those brothers were doing, I mean, so this isn't this isn't. A new thing. This isn't a new phenomenon, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's not. No ideas original. It's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. That's yeah. a fact. Never what you do, but how it's done. That's you know? a fact. That's a fact. But again, I, I still wonder, right? Because there are these differences, right? Look at what A.G. Gaston's, right? Man died $100 billion. He amassed all this money during Jim Crow era. Yes. He bailed out Dr. Martin Luther King. Absolutely. That, that that shows a great case of why it is important to have some money so you can do some things to further the, the the fight for the people. Now let me let me ask you this question, right? So you that that's a great point, and there's a number of stories, not just him, but other folks who are business. Correct. Owners, right? Correct. How many of us even know who Ag Gaston is? I don't know. To the I mean, listening I, audience, I, I talk to people every day. Most people have no idea who Ag Gaston is. I know Don does. Right. Yeah, matter of fact, I think that's Don's logo on his uh, on his right, face. exactly. Right, but, so he does, but most people have hold no on, idea. Hold on. So story. for every everybody in the listen audience, put a one in the in the chat if you know who AJ Gaston is. And if you, you put a one in the chat if you know who AJ Gaston is. And if you're watching the replay, put a one in the chat and let me know if you know who AJ Gaston is. And be honest After. too, right? Now I know I know also, right, the sample the sample that comes in here is gonna be a little bit different because they are. They watch the Finance Rebel Show. So <laughs> if you watch the Finance Rebel Show, you probably know who A.G. Gasson is. Probably because I talk about him all the time. But when I say that, I'm talking about the masses. You understand what I'm saying when I say that, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. But th- there's there's examples all the time, right? I know you probably won't hate this one, but like, look at what Jay-Z's done with, with Lil Wayne, with 21 mm-hmm. Savage. He paid Lil Wayne's tax bill. He helped 21 Savage get, um, get citizenship, paid his lawyer fees, right? I know other people have other things, but there's a whole host of people who've done things, who've made some money to contribute to overall black movement, black progression forward. Mm-hmm. I mean, so I, I, I guess I don't understand why there is such strife and, and pushback on all of this. I mean, because, again, you got to look at you got to look at where we come from. You got to look at. Um, Bubble hood. How, how we've been treated, right? How we've been treated as a people and who's been treating us that way. And a lot of times our self-esteem is beaten down. We don't see ourselves a lot of times as being able to achieve certain things. So therefore we just, you know, shun it completely, right? So the other part of that is when we do look into that, a lot of times we start to chase the lottery ticket because now we're trying to skip steps, right? So a lot of this is about building, it's not about just becoming, it's about building. A lot of times we want to become things, but we don't want to take what it, you don't want to do the work that it takes to build. We just want to become. We want to be able to buy a course on Instagram and then, you know, in two weeks, I'm a real estate guru. So I'll push back on that. I don't think we want to become because becoming is a process. We just want to be. We don't want no parts of the journey. But go ahead. I'm sorry to cut you off. Well, that's kind of what I was saying, though. We don't yeah. want we don't want to do the work. We just want to become this thing. Like we want to be this thing, right? So, mm. you no, know, that's, that's semantics, but I get, but we're saying the same thing. We don't want to do the work, right? We just want to, you know, um, take shortcuts, which is why a lot of times we get harmed because some folks in our community are just pure capitalists. They don't care about the community. And, you know, then you end up giving somebody your money and getting nothing in return. Um, So also now when that happens, how do you look at business and capitalism? When you've given somebody 50, 60, $100,000, you have nothing left. Right. And, and, so, so I'm saying there, there are reasons why. How do we get past it? That's a whole different conversation, but there are reasons why our folks are the way they are. But I see a lot of people say, you know, I'll never buy a stock again because I lost a whole bunch of money in the market. However, they might have a car accident and get in the car and drive the very next day, right? Mm-hmm. And not only that, people, you know, when we're going back to business, they haven't taken the time to educate themselves fully. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even talking about having a difference of opinion, but like, I talk to people, I stop talking at a certain point because one, I'm feeling like I'm going to offend them and I don't want to do that. I really want to do, move in love with everything I do. Mm-hmm. But it's like, 
you have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. So it becomes it becomes hard for me. It becomes a struggle. And if you are really serious, like serious about your people, I feel like you got to understand all this stuff. In my opinion, not you don't got to be an expert. A lot of times that requires work. That's not a quick fix. It's not it's not sexy to say either, right? So it's not it's not sexy to say. So. You know, it's, it, man, you know the stuff that we deal with and we struggle with and we fight against every day. Um, because what you're talking about is real work. You're talking about actual study. You're talking about dedicating time, right? So so these are things that have to happen for you to have a full understanding. People want to, to you know, um, take a limitless pill and just be all powerful tomorrow, <laughs> right? So this- they want, this they want that red pill. They want Neo's red pill. <laughs> so this is what you're fighting against. Um, but and then when you look at what you said, A.G. Gas, and I like that example that you gave. Right. And I see the Black Fortunes book behind you, which is an important book that I think that um, a lot of folks should read. There are a number of stories in there. Right. That's 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 one of my favorite, very powerful books. But if you take that book and take some of the case studies in that book and you talk to the average person, you don't know that. I mean, most people I talk to when I ask them about their experience growing up and who they learned about. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, unless they come from a conscious household, it's just like in school, we just learned about Dr. King. They don't even get Malcolm, right? So they just get Dr. King. They just force fed Dr. King every year on um, one month a year. Right? Well, we'll get a little Malcolm, but we don't get whole Malcolm. Man, listen, I, I've talked to people, they don't get Malcolm. Like Malcolm is a little bit more palatable now, but when we were coming up, a lot of schools, a lot of things didn't even talk about Malcolm, right? No, the schools um, didn't. No, they did not. No. But that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So we're fortunate enough to come from communities and people that we didn't have to get all of our education in the classroom, right. Per se. So we were exposed to an AG Gaston, right. We were exposed to these people. Like we, we were black enterprise was put in front of us. So we were able to see people that look like us that had accomplishments and were accomplishing things. And, you know, although we need more than representation, we can't fool ourselves and say representation doesn't matter. It does matter. Absolutely. Right? But it can't matter by itself in a vacuum. We need a lot of other things outside of just representation because a lot of times we're just given representation. That is a fact. That is a fact. But, you know, one of the things when I have these discussions, right, being woke versus having money or making money, Mm -hmm. I I always ask them, so what's your path to success? How do you plan on winning? How do you see us winning? What what steps will it take? What, What moves need to be made? What do you need to do in order to play your part in this advancement? And a lot of people don't have that. They they don't have an answer to that question. And I, again, I find it weird. I guess I'm getting old. I'm becoming a crotchety old man. <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, you said what moves do uh, what moves have they made? So we, you said so we. That's we, why I get pushed back right there. People start hitting me with the Uncle Phil, John. We like you know what I mean. Like, but, then I, but then I also say, what moves do you need to make? Right? Yeah, for so, we. For we like and for you us. and you, yeah, right? you for you us, need to, you need to make for us. Yes, yes. Most people don't want to have that conversation because a lot of us practice, you know, rugged individualism. So we don't even want to talk about what uh, the we personally have to make for us. Okay, so we think everything is all about pull yourself up by the bootstraps. No, 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 no. But that well, you said do do I so think rugged, that, rugged, no, not you, you're talking about the week. Oh, the matches, right? So, week, right? so that is something that I fight against a lot. I fight against that a lot. I fight against that a lot where people are like, look, man, I hear you and all, ain't nothing changing. I'm just gonna look out for me and mine. Now I do I do think pull yourself up by, by the bootstraps should be a part of our conversation. Me and Don Johnson, shout out to Don Johnson, by the fact Don gets the horns because Don is always on deck. Thank yeah. you, sir. But you um, boots, if you got boots, you got that boots. But that is a part of the conversation. It's a small part. It's not everything, but it is a part of it because pulling yourself about a bootstrap just means you're taking agency over yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're doing the best you possibly can do with what you have. And a lot of times, we have people just like, "What you gonna do? I don't know. I'm gonna live on my mama couch. I'm gonna stay at my girlfriend's house, right?" You know, I'm going to live off this dude. Not thinking about what progress they're going to make or anything else they're going to do. Mm-hmm. So how do you how do you reconcile that? Man, Whew. what you're talking about is accountability, right? So that's the thing about, you know, me, me and you have black wealth conversations all the time. 
And I guess at the end of the day, it's not just one thing. No. Right? We have work to do on so many fronts, whether we talk about um, whether we talking about money or we're talking about the legal system, the education system, um, what's going on with our food and our communities. Like we have so many fights that have to happen. That's a fight, too. It's a huge fight about accountability. What I hear you say is accountability. And that is a conversation that we have to have. Um, it's a tough conversation. Something that, you know, but, but we definitely have to hold ourselves to a higher standard, right? So I agree with you. I don't disagree at all, right? But I also think that it's context to that, too, because a lot of times we use that as an excuse and we ignore the systems that are around that don't allow people to have boots to begin with. You can't ignore that and just say, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. We have to make sure that people have what they what they need to pull them. That's why I said you got to have boots first. Right. So it's, not, drinks. So it's not a, so it's not a simple conversation and people right. try to make things black and white. Like I, I see this all the time. People just try to make things black and white. I put out a, I forgot, I put out a video um, about a book on our YouTube channel. Um, um, it's about what is about the banking system. And someone says, man, you know, in this country, all you got to do is work hard. And, you know, there's no sense in even talking about this, these black issues. There are no black issues. Just work hard. Like somebody said that. This is 2023. 2023. I'm like, OK. All right, now hold that, hold that thought. I want to play another clip. I want to play another clip. Now check this out. Nothing that you can get involved in that history won't be an asset for, mm. you know. And the key to history of no matter what it is is reading. Mm. And so once I once I realized that there, I said I'm gonna read about every anything that I want to know. I'm gonna read about it. And I just read my way out of every situation that I've ever been in. Being a student well, of the game. And you're yeah. well read and we have your book now. To Absolutely. Read. Also yeah. learn from, man. What are you most proud of about the book? The ability for the book to show people, younger people and other people, how far we've come. Mm -hmm. And how important it is for us to read and find out and know our history. That's what this is. Mm. You know, This is a, a book about the history of, at the bottom. Yeah. You know what it mean, what it's like to be at the bottom yeah. and rise up from the bottom. That's what I want to conquer do. the world. Yeah. So to your point, right, Jimmy? A lot of people don't understand that. And that point there, I feel, was made very eloquently. Mm -hmm. For those who don't know, that was Dapper Dan. Now, yeah. I'm from the Get Fly '80s, right? So Dapper Dan is a staple in the culture. Um, if you don't know about Dapper Dan, look up his story. It's very definitely inspirational, right? My man didn't have nothing. He didn't have nothing, built something, lost it all, and then built it back up again. So when you talk about building your stuff up out of your bootstraps, Jimmy's right. You do need some boots. You do need some laces, right? Hopefully those boots don't have holes in the soles, and you can keep moving and walk through the snow when it gets, or the rain, when things get crazy. But, you know, that point he made, though, about reading and understanding your history I feel that's why people take pulling yourself up out of bootstraps way out of context yeah. and they apply it to everything. It's like, no, no, redlining was real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Slavery was real. Jim Crow was real. KKK is real. Crack cocaine is real. All of these things are real. All of these things have been major, major obstacles, impediments, threats to the black community. So you, you definitely have to keep that in context. And by the way, the name of that book is How the Other Half Banks. I did see that question in the chat. It's How the Other Half Banks is the book that I did. Uh, so I do like 60 second book reviews in our YouTube channel. But that was one of the comments that I was just reading. And I'm like, I mean, this is this is how some people think that, you know, you just pull yourself from your bootstraps. You ignore everything else. You ignore history. Um, and you can't do that. You just can't. I, I don't know. I think some people think that. So you did that book review. I'm looking for it now. Was that a short you did, Jimmy? Yeah, it's a short on YouTube. Um, it's also on IG and TikTok. Are you just covering them all? Yeah, you know. Um, but that was an excellent book, though. How the other half banks. Um, definitely, definitely a good book. But it talks about um how we kind of have two different banking systems in this country, mm. and how it exacerbates the uh, you know the wealth gap. But the point is, like, somebody just made that comment to it. And I was like, okay, you know, it is what it is, man. So um, 
but I think Don makes an excellent point, as do you, right? That, that's a conversation. So there's a lot of tough conversations that we have to have with our people, but we we have to have them. My problem is a lot of times we like to have them in mixed company, right? Well, you know, that's, that's you know. <laughs> I mean, listen, we're, we're doing this right now in mixed company, whether we know it or not, right? Everything no, this is true, true, right? is but, mixed company. But also have empathy, too. You know what I mean? A lot of us don't 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 tend to have empathy because I mean, here's the fact of the matter, man. Like the, the times we're living in now, we're privileged. You know, some will say things haven't changed. I disagree with that. Things have changed. I have elders I talk to. They don't have the ability to just get up and do some of the things that I do on a daily basis where they didn't have in those times. Right. So, so, so we are privileged. But I think a lot of times the same way we get it mad at, you know, the sheetrock people for not acknowledging their privilege. Sometimes we don't acknowledge our privilege of just like, you know, from a timing standpoint. Right. Um, so we have to have empathy when we talk with our folks. You know what I mean? Especially when you actually get into when you actually put boots to the ground and you really get out and talk to people. And that's one of the things that I've recognized, too, is that a lot of our, our folks that are, um, are commenting on the community now, they don't have boots on the ground. They don't talk to people. No, right? they don't. So, so Corey and I go to prisons and teach classes. We go to the Youth Study Center and teach classes. And when I hear those young brother stories, I get a different perspective. When I hear about how they were abused physically, emotionally, sexually, and they turn to the streets as a way to kind of like, you know, get back at, at being touched or being taken advantage of. Because that's all they have. You get a whole different perspective as someone who's never talking to the people or getting in front of the people. You're just looking at them like, oh, they're just deviants. Right. Oh, they're just this. Oh, they're just that. So we got to have tough conversations because, again, some of these things are still wrong. What you did was still wrong. But just have that empathy when you speak with your people. And a lot of us don't have that. We just want to throw people away. And um, I ain't about that life. Not our folks. I agree wholeheartedly. But I want to I want to I want to see uh, this book, brother, this book review. So let, let's jump to that real quick. If you're if you're just watching, right, just jump into the chat. Tell us your name. Tell us where you're hailing from. And tell us, what do you think? Should black people just focus on getting money or just focus on being woke? Now let's jump into this real quick. You of how the other has banks in less than 60 seconds. This book was written by Professor Mirza Baradaran and released in 2015. The book breaks down how America has a two-tiered banking system, one for the wealthy and one for everyone else. The legendary James Baldwin once said, anyone who has ever struggled with poverty knows how extremely expensive it is to be poor. And if you spend any time in the inner city, you understand the role check cashing places and payday lenders play, which contributes to this two-tiered system. This book talks about not only why this has happened, but also gives recommendations on how to fix the two-tiered system. I would recommend this book because it gives a historical context to why some of the issues we see in 2023 Really, the only this is a by the hood. Oh, it how the other it's all good. That was towards the end, anyway, brother. My bad, my bad. That, no, that I sounds know. dope. It's, it's I think good. I'm going to uh, watch, or not watch, read that book now. Yeah, it's a, it's an excellent book. Um, okay. Shout well, out to Dwight. I knew Dwight would have read it because Dwight reads everything, yo. Yo, listen, Dwight is the the, the historian. But real quick, let's uh, let's pause real quick. Let's talk to the folks. We ain't talk to the folks. I missed last week. I apologize. I was. Avalanche by tax returns. Tax season is now over. Well, actually, tax season never ends. So it's tax preparation season is over. Tax planning season starts now. So hopefully y'all are planning. If you don't have a tax plan, you ain't got a wealth plan. So get y'all stuff together. All right. So Lawrence says, too many of us out. Too many of us out too much validity on street credit. All right. Too many of us put too much validity on street credit versus real credit. Running the block versus owning a home, securing a bag versus having real wealth. I would agree with that. All right, being woke is essentially being that I don't agree with that, brother. Don't. <laughs> Especially when the bill, the rents are. Right. So I believe you can do both. And I think it is vital for the existence of black people for us to do both. As Shannon Sharp would say, both, B O U F, both. Um, B O F F both, <laughs> right? Uh, all right, Laura said too many of us put too much. Uh, you said that already. Uh, on a journey to, to destroy the community, yeah, but a lot of people. No, what he's talking about with that when he wrote that comment, he was talking about um when I was talking about the example of folks that like destroy the community, but oh. they tell you that okay, well I made enough capital, now I'm just going to give back. 
and we supposed to look at them as just being given back, but like just ignoring what they did to get the capital to begin with. Listen, man, them turkeys on Thanksgiving mean a lot to people. That's always wild to me anyway when they be doing turkey giveaways and folks ain't got no way. What they gonna do with it? I don't know, man. I guess give it away, sell it, maybe. Yeah, to go, oh, give, money, to go give money to buy more drugs, right? Okay. Yeah. What's up, Dwight? Thank you, please, thank you, thank please, you for joining please, us. Please. All right, so Lawrence says, I'm waiting for the day that black people are allowed to live outside the construct of race, capitalism, wokeness, etc., to merely be without the baggage. Well, in order to do that, we have to fight for it. And I don't know if we'll see that in our in our lifetime. What do you think about that, Jim? I don't think we will. Um, Cornell West has a book. Um, it's called Race Matters. And he talks about how people want to just live outside the construct of race, but you can't avoid it no matter what you're dealing with in this country. Any, any system that we go to, race will matter. It just does. I'm mean, sad to say, but it is. Yeah. You know? Still Rocks 33 says, truth be told, probably be lyrically like Talib Kweli. Excellent, Larry. Thank you for joining us. Still Rocks. Appreciate you, appreciate you, appreciate you. Cole Arby's in the building. What's up, sis? The cost of everything is going up. I had to raise prices because of my overall expenses. Exactly. Nicole, we still got honey. I ain't got no promotion for the honey. What we sell them? Talk to me. We like to talk business. Rochelle, what's up, family? What's up, Rochelle? Akira, what up, what up? You know what? I meant to get the horns of Rochelle, too. Get the, get the horns of Rochelle. Oh, Dave Foster's in the building. Legend. What's Coming up, up Dave? Areas, uh, what? Real estate agent mogul? <laughs> What's up, Dave? <clears throat> Those little fat people. <laughs> uh, uh, my, they my folks, man. I, I need to know how to say this. Is it what up TV? What up TV? But anyway, thank you for joining us, brother. All right, Nicole says even selling raw. All right, you you still do. Mm, I messed that up. You still have the honey, great. Even with selling raw honey, I get people that would rather pay the supermarket prices and complain about my prices. All right, well listen, I need some honey. Holla at me. I brought some before. You know, how, do we, how, do we buy, how do we buy honey from Nicole? I want to support too. Yeah, Nicole, hit us up, and I'll connect you with Jimmy. Okay. Save that dude some some time upstate. Yes, indeed. I'm talking about Jimmy's uh, debacle or uh, uh, running. <laughs> Don Johnson says you can add value to the community without adding value to those individual people. Sometimes people that aren't community minded shouldn't be protected by those who are. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's something I struggle with my entire life. And, and my mom used to tell me, like, you can't save everybody. Like, you know, and again, I'm I'm not perfect. I struggle with that at times. Like, I know that sometimes you, you just got to let people go. Right. Uh, Rock Ross is in the building. All right. That's my right. mortgage man right there. Thank you for joining us, Robert. All right. Don Johnson says, then when the scammers get elevated too high. So I'm still befuddled by all the scammers who've been outed still have massive followings. I don't get it. They're all about to start a church now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, always the next move. You're always the next move. Thanks. Nia's perspective. What's up, sis? How you doing? That's my sis right there, Nia. All right. I don't know what you're saying. Yes, you are. I lost that point. I'm getting old, y'all. I'm getting old. <laughs> All right, so the white is sort of A.G. Gaston's, of course. Don Johnson is sort of A.G. Gaston's. His book. Okay, bro, this, this, this is a cheat code. This sample right here is not indicative of, of, of our overall community, man. That's like, all right. I'm still yeah, going to go tune, If y'all in tune with the Finance Rebel, I already know that y'all y'all already That's all right. That means I'm doing my job, so let, yes, me, let, me, oh, let, let, me, let me get my flowers off, bro. <laughs> Marvin says he knows about A.G. and Robert Lewis. No, it's about AG. All right. All right. Don Johnson says, then, then we be pushed. There will be pushed back based on what side you come. Being the same skin complexion doesn't mean we playing the same team. That's a fact. Yeah, man. Every brother ain't a brother because of color. Chuck D told us that a long time ago. All your skin folk and kin folk. Right. Dwight says there are a lot of folks that don't read or study. That's a fact. I find that amazing, but I guess because I'm a nerd. Um, you know, 
Name that book, please. Uh, Jimmy did already. Martin said it's cruel. It's cruel just to ask a bootless man to pull himself up by his bootstraps. I, I would agree. I would agree. Dwight says great book. Okay. All right, Nicole says black people should get both. I'm a business owner and give back to the community when I can and also make money. Facts. Yeah. I'm with it. I'm with it. So with it. Don Johnson says, if you really had to choose one or the other, the answer is get the bag. Every problem in the community can be helped by having resources. Yes and no. Well, I like the way he wrote that because I was getting I ready. To push back. I was getting ready to push back on that, but then I realized he didn't say fix. He said help. Yeah, but <laughs> so I get what he's saying. It can be helped. But sometimes you can add money to a bad situation to make it worse. Yeah, a lot of our issues are mental health issues. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But again, he said help. You can help with that too with some resources. You can. You can. Oh, all right. Aubrey Street Acre go. Farms, 856-476-4498. Aubrey, Aubrey Street Acre Farms at Yahoo.com. Okay. All right. Do I get it? Do I get a cut for my commercial ad just now? <laughs> so Aubrey, Aubrey Sweet Acre Farms, phone number 856-476-4498. Aubrey Street Acre Farms at Yahoo.com. And Aubrey is spelled A U B E E S W E E T A C R E Farms at Yahoo.com. And I brought Nicole to honey before. I've known her for years. We're friends, but I brought her honey. It was great. Actually, getting local honey during this season mm -hmm. is actually kind of good for you because I be having mad allergies. Man, listen. Mad allergies. All right. Dr. T's in the building. That's the LinkedIn legend over there. What's up, lady? How you doing? I need to learn how to uh, better use LinkedIn. Yeah, I. me too. Matter of fact, um, Dr. T, I'm supposed to have you on this show. I've asked you before. We need to connect. Um, Bawana says the battle of the big beards. No, nah, I cut mine down. Jimmy's winning. I can't <laughs> win. I can't win. My beard be all in my mouth. I can't <laughs> eat right. It's it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. A lifestyle, man. You gotta know how to. You gotta know how to like. You know, make this move. Like you know. Mm. Yes, I do need a piece of that money. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, Nicole says, "Yeah, I will message you and send." You. Okay, thank you. And I'm buying. I want to buy it. I don't want. I'm joking. I want to buy. I want to buy. So. So what what are we gonna do, man? Are we gonna I mean, stay woke. We gonna I mean, pump, I mean, pump fists? What we what we gonna do? I mean, I think that you know the answer that people say you do both. Obviously, and 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 we do both. Like you know, in terms of we we give away, we give away a whole lot, right? So, um, speaking of, I'm here. I might as well mention it. You know, our camp is coming up this summer. Um, by the hood camp. Um, we're gonna start accepting folks for the camp probably in the beginning of May or mid May. Um, our camp runs, uh, you know, every every week in July. Um, to get more get more information, go to buythehoodcamp.com and you can see some of the work that we do in the community with our camp. Um, so, you know, that's just one aspect of what we do at our camp. We literally do giveaways every week. Shout out to our brother Don, who's won several of our giveaways. But, um, but Don you is be, everywhere. Yeah, Don is everywhere. Yo, Don is everywhere. But you got to be able to do both. But the, the, the thing is, sometimes it's difficult to do both. Is uh, kind of what the conversation that me and Kamari had, which led to me, you know, popping up tonight. Um, cause it just is, it's just, it's very difficult to do both at a high level because you need to sometimes charge more to be able to put back in the business to get your business to grow a certain way. And that's another part of it too, Kamari. If I'm not maximizing profit, am I doing myself a disservice in terms of being able to grow my business right now? When I grow my business, I'm able to employ more folks. So I slow that up by not charging market prices. You see what I'm saying? So it's it's a it's a difficult thing. I think I think I think every situation is going to be case by case. Yeah. Right. Every yeah. every situation is going to be case by case. Um, mm -hmm. For me, I tell people though the the ex the standard should be excellence across the board though. And so, Jimmy, I'm sure your product that you're putting on the market is good. You're not a slumlord. No, I'm definitely slumlord. I say definitely slumlord. Here's the thing, right? So, but. 
every time I buy a property or pro- do a do a development project, like I'm putting money in black folks' pocket, right? Absolutely, because I'm sure some of your construction <laughs> folks and my plumber's black, my GC's black, my electrician is black, my property manager is a black person. Um, I hold a real estate license. I work at an all black real estate firm. Shout out to Mosaic. So. I'm surrounded by nothing but our folks that get money off of every project I do. I have black appraisers, black mortgage bankers and brokers. So, but the thing is, in all my tenants are black. I don't, I don't have any tenant that isn't a black person. So with that being said, um, sometimes not maximizing profit on that way is not allowing me to put my money into professional folks pocket. But at the same time, I'm doing a service for some of those folks that I'm not charging market rate because they get to live in a quality um, project. I don't want the term project should be used. You know, the quality, when I say project, I just mean real estate project, Um, a quality house um, at an affordable rate. Right. And right now we're definitely struggling with affordable housing. So struggle is an understatement. It's an understatement. But the only way that's going to solve that is not going to be big conglomerates coming to solve that. It's the everyday mom and pops, people that can solve that issue. Um, But, you know, I definitely think about that. I think about the fact that, okay, I'm not maximizing the scale this one way, which still helps our people. So it's just that battle, right? And I don't but, need to price gouge either way, though. But again, right, we're talking about real estate. So you can make money in real estate two ways, right? You can make it off the cash flow. You can make it off the appreciation. Yes. So you're still making money, but it's probably more so on the yeah, appreciation. Un- unreali- so it's unrealized appreciation. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. I have no complaints about appreciation. Right. So um, it's still a win-win, so to speak. But I feel more of us need to think about what are the win-wins. And, and listen, I tell people all the time. I'm not a black owned business. I'm a business owner that happens to be black, meaning that I'm striving to be excellent in every facet of that because some people use black owned business as a crutch. Mm-hmm. Like I can give you substandard service. No, I can't. I got to try to stand up every day for any mistakes I make because I do make mistakes, mm-hmm. right? My team might make some mistakes. I got to stand up for them and they're standing up for me, you know? So it, it's, it's, it's a complicated thing, but that should be the mindset. To try to be great and try to do the very best you can. And that does cost money. But, you know, there's some other things that could come along with it, right? Because if you have a great tenant and they appreciate the below market rate rent mm-hmm. and they don't tear up your shit because we all see the horror stories, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a savings. That's a savings. So, you know, you can win a couple of ways. Yeah, and, and, and to Nicole's point, right? So sometimes when you try to operate with excellence and provide a good product or service, um, you want to charge for that product or service. Yeah, and absolutely. Sometimes, sometimes that's tough too. Our folks want the hookup. Oh, they always want the hookup. They ingrain to ask for the hookup. You know what I mean? So, but you know, um, I think that the answer is also what a couple of people in the chat said: you have to do both. I think one of the issues is, um, on a massive scale, most of us aren't even thinking about this. Right. That was why I thought it was, and you thought it was a great conversation to have. Yeah. Because again, we have to stay woke and not the way that the Santos down south was talking about it. We're talking about being aware, aware of what's going on. Black folks are being attacked at every angle. So whether it's political, like Jimmy said, environmental, water, everything. And if we're not paying attention, we just want to get sucked up. So yeah. uh, look, look who's in the building. Superstar. Legend. Chaz. Thanks for tuning in, man. Thanks for tuning in. Legend Chaz. Yep. I just got her uh, class. I didn't uh, get a chance to check it out yet because I've been buried under tax season. So I'm gonna check that out soon. Yeah, man. I'm glad to see you still. You still around, man. I know how tax season gets for you. Yeah, I should be somewhere asleep right now, but I try to stay consistent with this. This is yeah. probably my one highlight of the week. I have many, but. One of the ones I really, really look forward to. So, so what should we be doing, Jimmy? Like, we should be staying woke. How do we stay woke? We should be making money. How should we make money? You know, funny thing is, as you're talking about that, I was sitting there thinking, like, um, in terms of what it means to be woke, right? It's just to be conscious of what's going on, to be aware. Right. And a lot of that goes back to what Dwight said. A lot of us need to just read more and study, man, um, because the foundation has already been laid. The blueprint is there, but a lot of us don't even get the lesson. A lot of our ancestors have put down on the pen and paper what the answers to a lot of our problems are. But if we don't ever get those answers because we're not reading. So we definitely have to um, just stay abreast of what's going on, man. Reading is so powerful. Reading is so powerful. Very powerful. 
Yeah. Very powerful. All right. So Nicole says in the raw honey business, I have to market myself as a black woman because this is a white dominated field. I get that. I get that. There are not many black beekeepers. That's a fact. That is a fact. Yeah, Nicole's the first one I ever heard of. So shout to Nicole. Yeah. Um, she's definitely. The, yeah. I, um, a buddy of mine does it with his kids, but I don't know if he actually sells the honey. They do it more as like a hobby. Mm -hmm. so I know Nicole's been doing this for a couple of years now. So, um, yeah, uh, that's why you have to do it even more, right? You're needed. You're needed. Ah, shout out to Fed. So why isn't being financially fit in the woke diaspora? I would agree. Uh, that's a great, that's a great question. I, I would agree. Sadly, though, um, and we talked, we touched on this a little bit earlier. I asked Jimmy, you know, why does getting, why is getting money legally always kind of looked down upon and frowned upon? Mm -hmm. And, you know, in this country and around the world, we have crazy relationships with, with financial systems. If you can remember, black folks could not move on the stock market at all. Again, that book, Black Fortunes, that Jimmy mentioned and I highlighted, they mm -hmm. talk about that, right? Um, real estate, there, there's still craziness going on in the real estate sector. Don, not uh, Don, Don, no, John, John Johnson, the creator of, of Ebony and Jet, talks about there's a time when he was going to buy a building in Chicago downtown. He had to send his white lawyer to do it. He couldn't buy it because he was black. He had to send a proxy. And he went in and acted like a janitor. So, right, and now we're, we're still having issues with, with appraisers. White appraisers are, are disproportionately underrepresenting the cost or the value of black homes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we have all these complicated relationships with financial things and financial issues. I would say that's part of the reason why many of us kind of push back. But I also think it's the reason why we should go in deeper and really figure out what the real jewels are. When you start to study about the Freedmen's Bank, right, and what happened uh, with the Freedmen's Bank, I yeah. mean, that's just like, you know, tragic. so even times when we've taken, you know, taken up, um, putting the work in to build something, it's been destroyed um, by the powers that be. And you mentioned also like Wall Street, uh, being locked out of Wall Street. Have you ever read the book uh, The Prince of Darkness? It's about Jeremiah so, Hinton. Yeah, the brother from um, from Haiti. He was Haitian. Um, I I started, I have the audio book. I couldn't get into it. Okay. <laughs> it was so, but if you read that, well, first of all, he wasn't a, he wasn't a, a nice human being, according to the book about yeah. his life. Well, you know, you know when they write a book about your life and they still describe you as being a terrible human being, you must have been terrible, right? <laughs> but, but the point the point is, he was locked out of Wall Street. He had to, he, but he was so intelligent in terms of understanding where markets move that he had to get a white proxy, and the white proxy did it because he was going to make his piece too. Mm. Um, but listen, they always gonna get their piece. Oh, they're gonna get their piece. But so, <laughs> but but the thing is, though, when you read that book and they talk about just the, the lengths he had to go through to be able to participate in the markets, mm. and this, this goes back to what I was saying earlier. Like a lot of times, we don't even think about um, the kind of privilege we have in terms of when we're being born, right? right. We live in a world now where we can just open up our phone and in two seconds have a brokerage account and be able to trade, invest, and do all these things. Well, a lot of our ancestors didn't have that ability. I used, joke, I used to joke with my mom. I'm like, I used to show her these charts. So like, look, you know, if you bought one share, Coca Cola, and all this, she's like, oh. she'd be like, boy, when, then first of all, I'm trying to survive. That's one. And two, I knew nothing about that and I didn't have access to it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So we've been kept out of things for uh, such a long time that we just turned our back on it. But I think that is part of the conversation. I like that question that Daddy has brought up because. I would venture to say that if you're not taking care of your finances and you're not doing what it takes to kind of um, have your family um, prepared, then you're not even fully woke. You can't be woke if you're not financially fit. That's the way I look at it. Facts. Facts. Oh, uh, man, we got the brother kill here. All this math is in the building. All right, so I think this is an issue. What the end goal of wealth accumulation is. Do we want wealth so we can buy Ferraris and lav live lavishly and be disconnected from the Black Collective? Or do we want it? I'm just saying, just want it. You should have caught us about 30 minutes ago. 
I just, I just talked about that, Kill. But me and Kill yeah. have these conversations too. So yeah. um, we already are, are have the understanding about um what it means, right? And uh, enough of, uh, is there enough of us that even are having this conversation or thinking about being conscious as it pertains to capitalism? That's the question I would have for you. Come on, do you think there is enough of us even having this conversation or thinking this way? Well, hold that thought, right? Um, I want to play this. Okay. I think because we have undercounted ourselves and underestimated ourselves, we quite forgotten that we were never a minority. As a billion African people on the face of the earth, we can create industries overnight if we decided that we don't wear no underwear we don't make. We don't eat no food that don't come from one of our farms. We don't sleep no, on no mattress that we don't make. We don't bury our loved ones in any coffins we don't make. We take the coffin industry away from the mafia. Uh -huh. We've forgotten our great potential as a people. So I, I think it's it's rough, right? But I wanted to play that because I think that's an awesome clip. If you don't know who that is, that's Dr. John Henry Clark, right? He's a mentor in my mind all the time. Dr. John Henry Clark. A lot of great stuff, a lot of works. Look him up. Um, I think everybody should check out The Great Doctor. Um, Jimmy, what was that question again? Are there enough of us that even think this is really an, an issue, right? Are there enough of us that actually practice capitalism that are even thinking about, uh, you know, being conscious or, or thinking of the collective? So I would say no, because um, most people don't, most black people, most people in general don't know what capitalism is. Most black people have no clue what really black people what capitalism is. And what is capitalism? It's just private ownership of a business or some kind of investment. Socialism and capitalism, excuse me, socialism and communism is the state owning your stuff or having a bigger role in your thing. And I always say to folks that if you really think about it, black people always have a problem when you have too much government involvement, at least in the last four or 500 years. So we want to stay away from big government involvement and everybody getting involved in your stuff and overtaxing you for everything. Inside of capitalism, you can be a capitalist however way you want to be. Yeah. And as we talked about it earlier, right, people are going to people. So we see bad capitalists, we see bad socialists, we see bad communists. So the common denominator for the evil, because that's the real issue, it's people. It's not the system or the ism. It's the people that are operating inside of those isms. And at the end of the day, most people are super selfish. Yeah. They only care about themselves. And if you really think about any real wealth creation, it's always a group activity. Always. When you look at boards of boards of directors on Ford or GM or, well, I don't want to say Tesla, but Tesla, um, any of these great companies is a board. There's a bunch of minds sitting around trying to figure out how to best coordinate capital, land, labor, equipment, right? They try to figure out how to do it. Those are the agents, the agents of production, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Yep. That's economics right there. But listen, um, I wonder, Dwight, I, I was talking to Kamari earlier about the book uh, Capitalist Nigger. Um, you might have to bleep that out because I ain't trying to get you a... Uh... Wow. Anyway, it's by, um, <laughs> by, by Chica, uh, Dr. Chica Onyani. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name. But I must wonder if Dwight has ever read that book. But I was talking to Kamari about it because a lot of people think like the doctor who wrote that book does. His thing is he believes that capitalism is the only way to save our folks, but just to go get it by any means. But the problem with that thought is, um, at least in my opinion, at least, there's no regard for what you do or what you what you do on the way up of getting that. Yeah, that's the book right there. All right, Jimmy, I want to read it. If I can find it, and you have to come back, and we have to do a book review together. Oh, absolutely! And I know, I know. I listen. I already know because I know you, and I read the book. It's going to piss you off, right? Mm, okay, I'm with it. But listen, you know, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. We should be looking to challenge our thoughts. Mm -hmm. We don't grow sitting in these silos and thinking that your shit don't stink and that you got it all figured out. That doesn't help anybody. 
you should challenge all your thoughts. Question yeah. religion, question it all, question those things until those answers are solved, right? Jake says that. Jimmy hates the fact that I'm a Jake fan, but no, I don't hate the fact that Jake fan. I just like to think that DC is beyond reproach. That's what I hate. I've never said that. Nobody's beyond reproach, but I just you say well, that. But if well, there's any, well, criticism, we'll have another conversation. That's another show. That, that's a whole. There's any criticism, you get upset. I mean, we wait past Neil. Oh, it's, it's, we wait past Neil. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. We, we, we we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. But I want to come to this other comment that Akil had. Do we want to build infrastructure and institutions that will enable us? to center ourselves as a people and live healthy and comfortably. These are the explicit conversations we got to have amongst ourselves. I would agree. I would agree. And there was a clip that I played earlier that I think I should play again. Um, that I think is super relevant. Mm -hmm. The question is, how do you define wealth? Is wealth your ability to go to the store and buy a garment, some shoes, a car, a flat screen TV? Is that really wealth? Wealth does not start from access to material things. Wealth starts with your possession of knowledge. If we don't possess knowledge that guides us into how to create wealth, then we'll talk about wealth, but we'll never have it because we don't have the requisite knowledge that would allow us to be a creator of wealth. And so, yeah, and so, you know, I say to people all the time, the most successful organization to date right now is the Nation of Islam. Oh, now I did, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I did get some pushback on that. Somebody said to me the Amy Church. So I have to go back and research that. Mm. I, I gotta go back and research because the AMEs have done some stuff um and they definitely get busy. So it's no slight, but a lot of their stuff is what? It's their religion, their culture, and their money. Right? Do for self is was made popular by the Nation of Islam by Michael Max. So I think that's the way to go. Now, we can take out the religion because I know a lot of people don't do that. It's hard for some folks because there's no guiding doctrine, mm -hmm. right? To kind of to kind of re recreate something like that. But it can be redone. It can be redone, in my opinion. Listen, man, I just got to say this again, man. The the brother minister's ability to, to to speak is crazy. Like I do a lot of speaking engagements, and I just I wish I could be on that level. His pacing, his pacing, and and, and use that's of his yeah, his pacing and use of his voice is just like it's a master class, man. You know, so I gotta find that whole um that whole talk. But what he's saying is absolutely true. Man, you can just plug in anything, Farrakhan, and you could study that for you know linguistic reasons, you know, speech reasons, because he does the same thing, but he again it's so masterful. But he's been rocking for what 60, 70 years, right? So yeah, yeah. it's a lifetime's work. It's amazing what you can do when you commit it. And consistent with a thing. And hey, listen, man, don't tell me that you understand until you hear the man. <laughs> Can anybody name that lyric? Who said that lyric? All right, that says black people are very good at creating and having vision, but we lack in creating systems. To really thrive, an idea must be supported by an ecosystem. I agree. I will push back about the vision part, but um, overall, I agree with your comment. Hold on, you saying we don't have vision? not in the traditional sense of it. So we can see a thing that's like, oh, we need this, right? We need to create this. But then we really, a lot of times, we haven't been able to see how this can transform later on. I don't know about that. I think I might agree with, with, uh, with Thaddeus. I think we do have vision. Now, being able to see that vision through, I think that goes to his point of creating systems. But I think we do have vision. Okay. I mean, I'm here for it. Yeah, Give me an example. I think we do. Give me um, an example. Of us having vision? Yes. Um, let's see. Let me think about this. Are you throwing me on the spot? Of course. <laughs> of course. This is live, baby. No, I'm, I'm uh, so a lot of things. All right, I'm gonna give you one to you to use your example. You don't think that 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 and this is this is really I'm throwing your guy back at you. You think Rock Nation was a vision? Yes. All right, well, there you go. I, I think Malcolm had vision. I think Farrakhan has vision. 
I think uh, Martin Luther King had vision, right? The, the very select few, but I'm talking about as a group collectively. And I know every everybody can't do that. I understand that. Listen, man, uh, we all we all got our third eye, man. So we have vision. But um, are you? Is it open now? We all got a third eye, but is it open? And are yeah. we are we in tune enough with the source to open that sucker up? But again, this also goes into what you said. You know, kind of changing the question when you talked about collectively, right? So, and, and I, you, I gave you an example just to prove that we have vision. Some um, of us do, yeah. I mean, yeah. But the collective piece, you could throw that into any equation, right? Because yeah, we, we can. Yeah, I mean, at this point, we really haven't operated collectively. Um, so it's weird, though. We kind of do, but we don't. It's it's a very weird thing. Like, uh, 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 I'm trying to think of something like all black people. I don't want to say all because somebody's going to say, oh, yeah, I know, because I'm not a monolith, but a lot of black people would say, we don't need raisins <laughs> in a potato salad, right? We all collectively get that for the most part. No, and, and, I, and I think that great work is being done, and a lot of people, to you know, going back to your word, are, are woke and understand that mm -hmm. you know stuff has to be done. It's why I was saying on our show the other day, and Don was there. I was saying like, I gotta get away. I I'll never say again that man, we don't support each other, we don't do this because that's not true, right? A lot of that talk comes out of frustration. Um, but the where we are now, I see a lot more of us understanding the importance of doing so and doing so, right? Um, and sometimes, again, you know, arguing with myself here as I, as I talk on your show, mm -hmm. but sometimes um, we are in our bubbles. So in our little bubble, we all support each other. Mm -hmm. We all show love. We all That's buy each other products. We all do these kind of things. But then when I think about what happens outside that bubble, um, it does frustrate me at times. But I think a lot of times um, your, your, your tongue has power. So we have to watch what we say and really focus on being solution oriented as opposed to just complaining about what the problems are. I mean, I agree, but I, I think sometimes you, you, I'm not disagreeing with you. I, I will just say this. You got to talk about a thing to recognize that it is a problem to then formulate a plan to make it no longer a problem. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if you got an hour to talk about a thing and all you're doing is spending 59.59 .59 seconds bitching about the problem and saying, hey, what can we do with this? Mm -hmm. You're kind of hustling backwards there. So I would agree with you on that. Yeah. Um, I, so I want to go back to the point, though, that you said we don't support each other. You want to stop saying that? I am going to stop saying that. But largely, we don't. Now, again, I got to say this as a caveat. I, I shared this with Jimmy the other day, too. Me being here is the product of Black-owned business and Black people. My daddy was a Black-owned business. Um, all the other I mean, I started in radio, right? What radio did I start on? WURD. What is WURD? Black-owned business, right? And so when you look at those things, I can never turn my back on Black folks, but I do think we are allowed to have a critique, a constructive critique of how the community reacts to Black folks or reacts to Black-owned business. But it's got to be constructive, not just bitching for the sake of bitching, and we have to also do the work to try to make things better, in my opinion. Okay. But I mean, I'm not saying it isn't, isn't work needs to be done, but I don't want to dis dismiss those that actually... Right. Um, because you know if you do it too much, it's like, damn, brother over there working. Sis yeah, over and, there and, working. And, and the fact of the matter is, um, and shout to Thaddeus, I see Thaddeus' point, but in my, in my bubble and in other bubbles that, you know, um, surround my bubble, I guess I could use that terminology, people are doing what they got to do. A lot of them are, yeah. But that goes to your point, right? Giving you props. You always say, find your tribe. Yes, find your tribe and build. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's get to a couple of these comments and then let's get out of here because I know Jimmy's tired as am I. I'm here, as am I. I'm, here, I'm here speaking with my brother, man. Every time we talk, you know, it's, it's, it's a great build. But, you know, as I get to these comments, I want to know what do y'all think, right? Should we be woke? Should we be broke? Like, how should we go about it? So throw that in the chat and let me know. All right, Dwight says, I haven't, but I will now. Thanks for the shout out. Of course. It's about the book. Yeah, he's going to read that book. Yeah, I'm capitalist nigga. And maybe we'll get Dwight on to uh, to do the review with us as well. Yeah, I know I kill's a big reader too. I kill you ever read that book? But go ahead. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's 
That's what we're supposed to do. Because again, mm-hmm. again, Akil could definitely he's been on the show. He do a whole big read through. All right, Dive says it's definitely a conversation that isn't being had enough in our community. You in my circle, you getting okay. You in my circle, you getting this black wealth talk all day. Facts, black wealth and black <laughs> things all day. Don, this is bad. <laughs> so I'm gonna say this. I don't know if you can say this, Jimmy, but. Don and I appreciate Don's stories. Just no, go. listen. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell y'all like this. Don is my guy. If Don talks about Black Wealth all day, um, 24/6, 365. Because that other hour on his Twitter is straight demon time. I told. I said now, on 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 his Facebook too. Don, Twitter got a problem with the algos, right? Because Twitter don't show you just stuff from the people that you follow. It shows mm-hmm. you stuff they like. You know what I'm saying? So Don might be liking something, and I just be going on my time. I'm like, whoa, like, yeah, Don be on it. Like, yo, I, I mean, I knew Demon Time on on Twitter was bad. I just found something today. It blew my mind. It blew my mind. It's, it's straight, straight pun pun. And the crazy part is, like, I'm like, they got to do something about the album because it's not you. You're not even liking this person stuff. It's something that somebody you know like. And they'll just put it mm-hmm. right in your timeline, man. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So if you at work, don't go to Don's Twitter page if you at work. That's all I'm gonna say. Like, don't do it. Shout out, shout out to Don though. Shout That's out to Don. Guy, man. Yeah, because he is in I think he's probably in every black wealth space, right? Yes, he is. I, he be into like I do a thing on Mondays called um Fin the Wars, basically other black black people that are in the financial space. Mm-hmm. I'll be popping up. I saw you the other day, Don. I was trying to give you a shout out, but the time didn't allow for it. But I appreciate you, brother. I truly do. Don, and I appreciate all of y'all. Handle, Don. Change your Twitter handle to Black Wealth and Black Cheeks. But go ahead, though. Go ahead, Kamar. Actually, that's a shirt. I might make that a shirt, Don. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Don, I'll make it a shirt. I'll design it real fly, and we can split the proceeds. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we can take a portion of it and give the give Black Charity. Yo, Yo man. Listen, man. I-, I want you to wear it at the FinCon, man. I think I won't. I know you will. That's what I'm telling you. Where the thing come? Wait till you see the shirts I'm getting made for thing come. Oh God! Yeah, I'm writing it down. Black wall and black, black cheeks. cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, y'all crazy. Oh, man. So listen, y'all. I appreciate everyone here. Y'all know the whole purpose of the Finance Rebel Show is to make wealth black again, right? So make sure you tune in every week at eight thirty. At 8, 8.30 was the tax time. We're out of tax time now, so we're going back to 8 like we did tonight. And let me know what other topics y'all might want to talk about. What are some things that are bothering you? Let me give something away before we get out of here, man. You know, uh, by the hood, anytime we do a show, we got to give something away, man. So I want to give somebody, uh, I'm going to give somebody $25 at the Instacart, man. I'm going to give away some groceries, man. All right, hold on. You tell me how you want to do it. You can't come on my show and show me up. So whatever whatever Jimmy's going to give, I'm going to match it. So it'll be Let's do two. All right, two, two. Right. So let's do two. Now we was how are we gonna do it though? I'll I'll send them out and you just give me the half back however you want to do that. But I'm just how you want to pick? How, how we gonna pick? pick? That's what I mean. How we gonna pick? Um, I don't know, anybody man. need some groceries? Y'all all stocked up? I mean, you know, I just wanna at Bottom Hood. That's what we do. Anytime we do any sort of uh, you know, any sort of media, we like to give stuff away, man. And by the way, I ain't trying to hijack your audience, but every Friday on Bottom Hood YouTube and Facebook. We do a show and we give away we give away fifty dollars of Bitcoin every Friday. But um you want to do the real names? You got another way. And this is the show. So first of all, you can't hijack my audience because it's our audience. Because I come on your stuff just as much as you come on mine. I, I, listen, I appreciate you, bro. I don't take anything for granted, man. And I, I appreciate you as well. By the way, Jimmy, Jimmy and Corey have the bigger platform. I'm just a small fish. Don't, don't you do that. Mind. Don't you dare do that. Don't you I, dare I'm do telling that. the truth. It's not true. Running numbers, running numbers, aggregate, it's aggregate. It's not aggregate. True. <laughs> So you where 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 are we going? Is it uh pick or wheel or I mean whatever you do, we use wheel of names, but however you want to decide to, to pick who you're giving it away, that's up to you, good brother. All right, it's wheel of names, that's what I'm looking for. That's what we use, but also remember with the wheel of names, you gotta type the names in the people that'll be in the giveaway. Oh lord, oh lord. All right, uh, how can we do this real quick? You know how we do it. We tell people to put the you know the, the, the ones in the chat and we add them to the to the mix, but that's up to you, man. I mean, you know. All right, we're going to follow Jimmy's lead. So put a one in the chat if y'all want to win some groceries, all right? Put a one in the chat if you want to be part of the giveaway. We're about to give away $50 in groceries, man. I mean, you know, I know y'all rich because y'all listen to the Finance Rebel, but everybody, hey, listen, maybe y'all gifted to somebody else. 
You know what I mean? So yeah. put a one in the chat real quick. This is what we do. We're gonna do two orders, two orders of twenty five dollars. Two twenty five dollar cards to, uh, you know, um, you know, give our folks some groceries, man. I'm trying to live out my best Panther life. Listen, we gonna start doing this bigger though. Absolutely, we are. But the reason we do twenty five is like we wanted to make sure that we consistently doing it every week. <laughs> like yo, you know, um. Kamari, as my tax professional, when you when you when you get a chance to look at that sheet and see the amount of money you get, where you're gonna you're gonna question me, but we give this away. Every why kid. Gonna, why am I gonna question? Because a lot of people do. They say y'all really give this away every like we give away money all the time. Um, I give away money too. I give away every, stocks. Every, y'all do Bitcoin. Every, yeah, every kid in our camp gets a stipend. Like this is what we do. We do this. All right, so I am. Putting these in, give me a little grace, y'all, because I do not. I mean, not... I can read, we can read them to you if you want me to give you um. So I, we got. I, I'm typing. Listen, my daddy made me take typing in, in seventh grade. I hated it. I'm like, why the hell am I doing this? You took typing class, bro. You're really aging yourself right now. I said Ada Lewis. Ada Lewis, yes sir. Shout out to Ada Lewis. I got in the, I got in, I got in the rumble with Ada Lewis one time. I, you know. Oh man, I've been in several rumbles with Ada Lewis, but I wonder, you know. I wonder how boy was doing. I don't remember his name though. I was coming <laughs> out of heavy leaf, and he was mad. Just, y'all used to get mad at us just for existing. No, nah, that wasn't me. So Nicole says, "Kamari, you've been woke since you were 15. Hey, that's actually a compliment. I'll take that. Absolutely, that's a I'll great. Take that. Why was y'all, right. y'all Ada Lewis students so mad though? Y'all used to just get mad for no reason. Um. Willie Lynch, man. Willie Lynch. I like that answer. Uh, so we got Nicole, Dr. Tawana, and Tankango, Jigga 1017, Speak Peace, Thaddeus Green. All right. All right. Now listen, we're going to do this in 30 seconds. Last one's in. That's all in. We got 15 people in the room right now. Everybody should be in. Oh, uh, 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 Untang Tango didn't put uh, Kango didn't put a one there. He just said Greek dialogue. Yeah, so some, some you want to be in there? This is some folks got so much bread they don't even need to be in. Yeah, and listen, you can always tie with the tie or give the give, right? Mm-hmm. You can take this and give it to somebody else who was in need. That's what I'm saying. So, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go into the chat myself and I'm gonna put um put our email there. So anybody that wins, just email me. Email me right away tonight. We're gonna get this paid out right away tonight. We're going to pay this out right away tonight. All right. All right. I am going to share the screen so we can do the giveaway. They may not even share it. If I try to share this, they may not let me share it. Let's see if it pops up. I might have to write it the other way. All right. So we ready? Five, four, three, two, one. And we are spinning. Check it, 1017. All right, that's the first one. That is the first one. We have a winner. All right. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Number two, two $25 gift cards for groceries. Thaddeus Green is in the building. Now, Thaddeus don't need this because Thaddeus already rich, rich, but rich, rich, <laughs> rich, rich. <laughs> so we got Jigger 1017 and Thaddeus. So put the um, put the email in the chat, Jimmy. I did. I'm not sure why it's not popping up, and I think it's probably because it's an email. Um, no, but it's uh, it should it pop up. What we, what's the email, Jimmy? By the hood LLC at gmail.com. You know, sometimes there is a lag here. Yeah, so don't forget to put the LLC by the hood LLC. So, um, Jigga Man and uh, there we go, Jigga Man and Thaddeus. Akira, I didn't see, I didn't, where, where you at, babe? I didn't see the one. Where's the one? Where's the one? You didn't put the one, Jimmy. Do you see a one? No, I don't, not under her name. I don't. We asked everybody to put a one if they were interested in being a part of our giveaway. Um, like I said, you know, we we by the hood, they tell me on a platform we give away something. So 
and Kamari, shout out to you for matching this. We're going to give away. Of course. I mean, I usually, I usually give away sneakers. Yeah, I usually give away stock, um, but yo, times are crazy. So, yeah, I'm down with doing um, a Black Panther. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, yeah. that's what we're moving to, man. We, 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 yeah. Instacart, it's an Instacart. And yo, by the way, um, every Friday, uh, he said, my people need it. No doubt. <laughs> every Friday, we give away Bitcoin in our uh, Buy the Hood Live every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern. So, you know, pull up to our YouTube channel every Friday at 7 p.m. Um, our YouTube page is Buy the Hood, B U I T H O O D. But no, this has been a great conversation, good brother. You know, I appreciate always talking to you. You know, we, we talk every day, but it's still always great to come on your platform and, and run my mouth. Our platform, right? Our platform. My apologies. I really mean, mind it. Yeah. Because I was told I have an open invitation to come on by right. the way, anytime I want, right? Well, so. Anytime you want. Yeah, it don't matter. The Friday show, our Wednesday pod, you pull up whenever you want to pull up, bro. IG Live, whatever you want to pull up. You know that. Yep. So I and I appreciate it. So I do not take it for granted. So listen, go on over by the hood, by the hood on youtube.com. So go to youtube.com yeah. by the hood. Everybody can find it. And you'll see Jimmy with the big beard, and you got Corey <laughs> with the big beard, and me, I got the little mini mini beard. So I got beard envy. <laughs> That's the only thing I'm envious of of any man is their beards. And so. listen, man, last thing I want to say is, man, um, please support our summer camp. And for those who don't know. Um, we give a free summer camp um, every year for kids all across the world. Uh, to get more information, go to buythehoodcamp.com. Um, and we teach kids about personal finance. We talk to them about the power of ownership, the stock market, um, real estate, banking. We do, you know, and it's completely free for kids ages five and up. There is no cost at all. In fact, the way we operate ours, our kids leave the camp with a stipend to start investing. So um, that's something that we do in terms of like doing our part. That's buythehoodcamp.com. Shout out to the winners. Don't forget to shoot me the email because I'm going to get you this uh, gift card this evening. And um, I, I work with Jimmy um, on the, and Jimmy and Corey on the camp sometimes. Yeah. I'm going to work to do more with them going forward. So it's official. I have my kids there too. Oh, yes, so he spread does. the word. And, spread and the word. And if you have any sort of need in terms of like school, if you if you run a school or know someone who runs a school or look for that kind of information, we do that as well. We're currently teaching a shot to Akil because Akil um, helped us get into the uh, San Kofa um, homeschooling, which is amazing. And we teach a personal finance class there. So, yeah, we're doing a lot of work in the community, man. So just look out for By the Hood, B-U-I-T-H-E-H-O-O-D. And we got amazing memes. <laughs> All right, Dr. T said good beardage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. T. That's funny. That's funny. But all right, y'all, as I say, remember, every Wednesday we are here at 830. I'll right, be here, be square. And like I said, I'm working on coming back more, doing more content. Look at that last question, Kamar. I just want to say that I want to make sure we answer that question because that's a question we get a lot. So, no, no. It's not open to kids in Philly. We actually put it online now. So it was open to kids all across the world. Yep. We have students literally all across the country, California, Las Vegas, Texas. We have students everywhere. I mean, shoot, we've had people as far as South Africa to tune into some of our lives before. So, yes, sir, yes, sir, and we've had students from South Africa. So, like, you know, it's it, once we put, and the thing is, we were forced that we used to do it actually only in Philly live, but the pandemic made us go online, and I can't see going away from it now because once we put it online, um, we had hundreds of students that came from all over the world. So it's like now I can't just not service the kids that need the information. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm trying to get him to do both, y'all. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah we, listen, we, we can, our thing is about being with the people and doing what we got to do to give back. So we're going to do it all, Kamar. Whatever you need, bro, we got to make it happen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, again, I'll be back. Maybe I got a, I got a couple things roasted in the clip to talk about um, some craziness, as always, but always some good stuff to come. So I'll see you all next time. Thanks again for tuning in to the Finance Rubble Show.